Hello and welcome to this second installment of a few videos that I'm doing for TS Elements, which is the T-Splines plugin for SolidWorks. And today I want to show you uh, how you can use T-Splines in Rhino in conjunction with TS Elements to build very complex shapes that would take many hours to build in SolidWorks, but taking just a few minutes in T-splines to build and then bringing into SolidWorks to finish off the work there. By way of introduction, my name is Mark Biasotti. I'm a product specialist with SolidWorks based here in Concord, Massachusetts. And I have been working with T-splines for several months now to help them bring this add into SolidWorks. And I'm excited about what we have so far and what lies ahead. So let me introduce this video and show you what we're going to be doing here. So this joystick that I showed in the previous video, uh, I built this several years ago. It actually took uh, over a week to build and any shape like this, which involves uh, a, a very ergonomic shape, um, usually has to be built up from a number many hundreds of surfaces uh, built individually and then knitted together to finally become a solid model. Um, this is just the way it is uh, when you use surface modeling. It's a very what I call uh, microsurgery approach to building shapes like this. So wouldn't it be great if we could actually take and create these very complex shapes with just one surface, but have that surface be highly manipulatable and let it take care of all this work that we have to go through in building shapes like this. So let me show you how to do this shape in a much simpler way using T-splines for Rhino and TS elements for SolidWorks. So what I have, what I have here is a network of 3D curves that represent one half of this joystick in Rhino. Um, in this particular example, I imported uh, most of these curves from SolidWorks and then built a few more in Rhino. And what I'm going to do is quickly build a T-spline with the definition being these curves. Now, what makes uh, sub-D modeling hard for a lot of designers is a very different workflow. And what most designers are used to doing in designing products or to start is to is to actually build their design up from 2D uh, top front right views maybe using Illustrator Photoshop or just hand rendering to define what they want to see in 3D and once they get to that point then they can start modeling in 3D but all in all it's really uh, defined by edges uh, the style edges of, of its front top side view and that usually wants to be the basis to start in 3D, and that is using curves, both 2D and 3D. So we're going to do that here in a moment um, using a little known T-spline command called T-skinning. And we're going to start by, let's, uh, let's hide uh, that layer and just expose this layer of these curves that I really want to do the T-skin on. Now this is the real tough part of the joystick. You have an insided patch here, you have a, a surface here with a high rate of curvature coming into this one, and that's what I really want to concentrate on. That's what I want T-splines to do the work on. So I'm going to then go to the T-splines from curves, skin, select these curves, and then um, now I just need to do a little bit of adjustment in this feature and I have the basis for a good start on this. So the first thing is just to make sure that my connections are all valid. So with these 3D network of curves, I want to make sure I have good connection, the proper connection between all of them. And you can see I do 4, 4, 4, 3, 3, 2. So all looks good there. So then the next thing to do is to look at the topology and it tries to figure out how best to skin between those curves, but sometimes it can get a little ambiguous and there can be alternate um, uh, solutions. So you just have to guide it a bit. In this case, I'm just going to click on this edge and say, yes, I want that 
to be included as an insided face. Now, well, don't worry about the preview there. That's that's not really the way it's going to look. And let's go ahead and go back to our menu. And then from this point on, we can preview it. And we've got a pretty good start on it. And uh, you can see that the curves don't quite match the surface, but there's some things we can do about that. We can um, we can actually uh, increase the spans between these curves, meaning uh, give it better resolution as it fits through, or we can actually stiffen it or put more fairing in it. So with the spans here, let's just increase the spans and see what we get. And um, it's looking better. You can see how this curve is fit better here, but it's kind of drooping down a bit here. So that can maybe happen by increasing the stiffness of it. And you can see it slightly modified to do that. So um, you know what? I'm just going to play a little bit more here and make some adjustments and see what effect that has. And you know what? I think I'm going to take that the spans of that increase spans out and reset it. And I think that's probably what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that. And you can see very quickly I've created a pretty complex surface um, just with curves. Now you can see it doesn't fit quite right down here with that single T spline, but there's something we can do about that. We can use the match command. And so we're going to go over here to match, and we're going to pick uh, this boundary of the T-spline, and then match it to these curves. And you can see you get a little preview of the spans, and then you can do a preview, and you can see oh, it matches pretty well. I can refine the match, but I think I'm going to go ahead and accept that. And I've got a good starter surface. You can see here we've got a really high, kind of a funky thing going on here, but we can pull that out in sol over in t SolidWorks. So let's we'll save that for SolidWorks. We could just as easily do it here. Um, you can see also we've got a little bit of match problem here. So let's go ahead and try to better match those surfaces with the underlying curve. Let's see what we get. Yeah, that works pretty well. So I think I'm ready to move over to SolidWorks. Now, I have another little surface I created here, and I'm going to use both of them together. So uh, let's go over to SolidWorks. But first, we have to save this out as a TSM file. Okay, and we're going to call this uh, today's date. And then we're going to go over to SolidWorks. And I believe I say that in my temp directory. Did I do that? Uh, nope. Let me put it in a place I know I can get to it much easier. So um, let's overwrite this one here. Okay. Okay, so over here in SolidWorks, let's go ahead and load those TSM files. Make sure it's inch. And let's go load the second one again, or in addition, I should say. And making sure that it's into the current model in inch. And so there we've got our two T-spline files. And so now it's just a matter of building some simple surfaces and knitting it and making it solid and shelling it. And then we can we do a little adjustment on the T-spline directly in SolidWorks. I'll show you that. So let's go onto our right plane and build some sketch geometry to build our surfaces. So let's go ahead and build some of that. So I've got some curves that I'm building here. Let's make these coincident. And let's make this coincident with.
of this, making it normal. And then let's throw some uh, 3D sketch curves in there. So I want to make a curve going from here to here. And then I want to arc right about here. And I think I'll do that using a 3D sketch plane. The reason I do that is it makes it much easier to control arcs when it's constrained to the 3D sketch plane. So let's go ahead and do an arc starting right here, ending here. Let's give it a one inch rad. And I think I've got everything for that. So let's just build some surfaces. So I'm going to use the boundary surface, clear out selection, using this curve up here as my first directional curve, first curve. And then this guy down here is my first direction second curve. Then on my second direction first curve, I'll use this guy. And then second direction second curve, that guy. OK. So a little bit of stretching of the isoparam here. Take care of that easily using connectors. So let's go add a few. and then adjust them so this is looking fairly normal to that. That looks good. So I'm not going to worry about tangent normal or things like that because this is really a plastic injection molded part that's split right down the middle so there's no matching of tangency across the midplane. And I'm trying to get through this video pretty quickly. So let's just do a, another boundary surface. But let's first unhide those two sketches so I can reuse them. So first direction curve up here, first curve. And then down here is our first direction second curve. Second direction first curve here. Second direction second curve here. OK. Let's go ahead and fill this area using fill surface. Before I do that, though, I'd like to use reference surfaces with fill because it better controls them. I'm just going to make a quick reference surface there. Let's go ahead and hide that sketch. Go to fill, use this boundary. Let's make that tangent. And then all the rest will make uh, contact. that. So let's use an edge there instead. Select other edge. There we go. Turn off optimize which will take it to a power fill. Got a tangent there. Contact for the rest. Okay. Hide that reference surface. Okay we've got those upper surfaces created. Let's go down to the lower end of the joystick and um, there's a shoulder surface around here that goes down to the top plane. So I think what I'll do is use quickly use a ruled surface um, right here. And I will sweep it normal to this top plane. And then just want to trim it down or trim it off of this top plane using the trim tool, keeping that. Okay, getting there. Got one more to do here. Just got to fill this back face and then we're going to make it solid and shell it. So, what I need to do, because I have this Fenny transition right here towards the back, I, on the top plane, I'm going to create a sketch and extrude that sketch. And um, I think what I'll do is build. A sketch line here, do a tangent arc from here, and then another tangent arc up to this point. And let's have this come in uh, on the Z, tangent to the Z. There we 
go. And then bring that up there. Add a few dimensional constraints. I want that to be a quarter of an inch. Let's just even this out to 0.875. And we've got our sketch. And you know what? I think I'm just going to include this as part of my extruded surface. OK, I think we've got it. Let's go ahead and extrude that. And I'm then going to, let's hide that temporarily. And now what I want to do is just extend out these faces here. Um, let me just hide that and uh, then trim it, mutual trim it together, just so we make sure we have a, a nice watertight um, connection there. So I'm going to grab these faces. You know what I'll do, though, before that? Let's knit all this together. It'll make my job easier. OK, I got everything. Yeah. OK. And now I can go and extend. So, picking these edges, and just go all the way around. Finish off here. last one right here. So I'm just extending by some ar arbitrary distance. A tenth of an inch will be fine. And now let's go ahead and um, unhide that uh, planar surface. And then we're going to do a mutual trim against the two. Um, you know, to make my job easier, though, let's just do this. Let's, on the top, Let's do another quick planar surface there. So we're going to uh, create a sketch, just a simple rectangle. If we want to, we can just actually make this coincident with the midplane, and then build a planar surface there. And then let's do a mutual trim of all three. That'd be fast. So we're going to do a trim, mutual trim, pick our three surface bodies. And then I'm going to keep this, that. Oh, but you know what? It looks like I've got a problem there where it's not extending down. Not sure why. Probably because this ruled surface isn't long enough. So let's go ahead and just extend that down just a bit more. Use our instant 3D to do that. OK, that's good. Let's do that again. So trim, mutual trim, using these three surface bodies. Mutual trim mark. <laughs> OK, and then selecting these as my faces to, or surface bodies to keep. OK, I think we've got water tightness. Let's just make sure. I always do this. So hide all, go to wireframe, look for any magenta edges. I don't see any, so that looks like we've got a good watertight knit that we can now go ahead and insert boss thicken on. And sure enough, if you get this button, that means that you've got it. And now we've got a solid. Now let's go ahead and shell. Um, using these as my remove faces. And doing 085. There you go. Really good to go. So one last thing. Let's go back and say we want to make some adjustments to this. Remember I had some concern about this area right here. And you see now that if I've edited back to my T-spline files, I actually have 
uh, manipulator nodes here I can start pulling on just like I did over in Rhino but directly in SolidWorks. Um, I'm going to align the triad to the UNB space and then I'm going to start doing a little bit of fiddling with this adjusting these points. I think I'll grab both of these. I hold down my control key to do that. Let's go ahead and let go of those and pull on this one again a little bit more. Let's pull on this tangency handle. There we go. And that makes it a little better. Let's do the same on this guy. Let's pull that up. Kind of reorient my view so I can see the profile. Pull on this guy. That's actually changing the boundary there. It's fine. So you can see I can just keep tweaking on this to get it pretty much what I want it to be. And so I got a little wobble right here. Let's pull that down. Let's go back to global space and let's pull that down a bit. Like so. Okay. And then one last thing, just to give it some say I have I want to really bulge this out. I can grab these points now and bulge those out. Maybe I want more body on the side of this joystick. That might be just a little too much. Okay. And there you have it. So let's go ahead and do a rebuild. See if we get a clean rebuild. There you go. Everything rebuilt nicely. I can have complete control of these T-splines directly in SolidWorks with TS Elements. So there you have it. What took many days to build in SolidWorks took maybe 20 or 30 minutes to build in T-splines and TS Elements. And the difference is very significant when working on these kinds of shapes. So if you have any other questions concerning this, feel free to visit the websites on your screen and I will get busy with my third installment for TS Elements. See you then.
So there you have it. What took many days to build in SolidWorks took maybe 20 or 30 minutes to build in T-splines and TS elements. And the difference is very significant when working on these kinds of shapes. So if you have any other questions concerning this, feel free to visit the websites on your screen. And I will get busy with my third installment for TS Elements. See you then.